Hey folks, this is the second part of Modeling uh, and Density, Module 4.2. This is an Integrated Math 3 link, so don't forget all your lessons can be found there. And then click Integrated Math 3. So how can we find the density of objects and, and uh, other stuff? So... All right, so modeling density, you guys. So here we go. Recall, density was uh, mass divided by volume. If we wanted to find uh, the population density, it would be population divided by area, okay? So uh, my students don't have to write down this purple stuff. I'm just describing this here. So a British thermal unit, BTU, uh, it's called a, it's a unit of energy, and it's approximately the amount of energy that's needed uh, to increase the temperature of one pound of water by one degree Fahrenheit. The energy content of fuel may be measured in BTUs per unit of volume. Okay, we'll talk about that. So here we have a spherical tank is filled with gas and has the dimension shown. Find the number of BTUs produced by one cubic foot. Okay, all right, so right after that they give you um, that uh, uh, the tank is filled with natural gas. It provides uh, 116,151 BTUs, okay? so. So that's going to be our, our mass right there, and then we're going to, we need to find the volume and divide it by the volume to get our BTUs per one um, uh, cubic foot, okay? So this is our mass, all right? So the volume of a, of a sphere is four-thirds pi r cubed, okay? So the radius is three, and then three cubed is 27, and then three goes into 27 nine times, and nine times four pi is 36 pi feet squared. That's our volume right there. Uh, well, that should be a cubed right there, not squared. This should be a, a cubed. So you'll see a few squares in there. I think I put a cubed later here, you guys. All right, so let me fix that as we're going along. Okay, so yeah, I put a cubed right there. So so the BTUs uh, for per one cubic foot is going to be, uh, this is what the, um, the, when the tank is full, how many BTUs it has. And this is our volume, so we divide it to find how much we can get for one cubic foot, okay? So that's our, that's our density question that they're asking. So I get about uh, 1,027 BTUs per cubic foot right there, okay? All right, so let's, um, uh, here's the same tank, you guys. It's filled this time with kerosene. And when it's filled, it provides about 114,206,000 of BTUs. So what is its density, okay? So remember, density is BTUs, uh, uh, where this is what we're looking for, the BTUs per one cubic foot. This is when it's full, so we gotta divide it by the whole volume of cubic feet. Okay, so we're going to punch those in, and then when we do that, we get about 1,009,803 BTUs per one cubic foot, okay? So which fuel has a higher density, the gas or the kerosene? Well, the gas is only 1,027, so clearly the kerosene had a much higher uh, energy density on that, okay? All right, so here's a cylindrical tank shown how many BTUs will the tank provide when filled with natural gas? Now, what I wanted to do was was do this. In fact, I'll do it right now while I'm cleaning this up. So I'm going to take this out. This is going to be my first slide right here. And then I'll insert a page. You get to see my... I do this. Okay, so anyway, so this is the second page of that. So recall, you guys, density is uh, BTUs per one cubic foot. Okay, so the BTUs in the tank uh, for the volume of the tank. Now, this says right here, how many BTUs will the tank hold? We're looking for this, the BTUs in the tank right there. Okay, so uh, we need to find the volume of the tank. So here we go. So we're looking for that, okay? And uh, we're multiply both sides uh, by volume right here. So if I multiply, because we want to get this volume out of the denominator. So if I multiply this over here times volume, it'll get will be left with BTUs in the tank. So here we have BTUs in the tank equals the volume times the BTUs per one cubic foot, okay? Now remember, you guys. Uh, the volume is going to be uh, pi r squared h, the area of the base, times the height. The circle is the base, pi r squared. Okay, so uh, this goes right, um, uh, the volume is going to go right there. The BTUs, uh, and this is going to be of natural gas, we discovered that in section, what was that, section B? Yeah, so we found from section B that our natural gas provided 1,027 BTUs per cubic foot. So that's what goes 
in right here. Okay, so we're going to put in the 350 right there, and we'll put in the 1027 right there, and that'll tell us how many BTUs are of uh, natural gas are in this tank right there. Okay, so when we crank that out, we get about 1,129,245 right there. Okay, all right. All right, so, um, uh, and then uh, that would be our, our BTUs right there, okay? All right, so general concepts of density, you guys. Um, uh, it's the average uh, uh, that describes the typical quantity of an item per unit or volume, okay? So per unit area or per unit volume, okay? So that's what density is. Our density is we want to find it per per unit area or per volume, okay? So it's calculated by dividing the total number of items by the total area or the total volume, okay? And then, uh, so two examples are mass divided by volume or population density, which are, you know, like population divided by the actual area right there, okay? And so pressure uh, is defined in terms of force per unit area. Is this pressure an example of density? Well, the key word right here is per unit area. So when it's per unit area, then yes, it is an example of density uh, because when you divide the total amount of force by the area over which it's distributed, it'll give you per unit area right there, okay? All right, so if you guys are in my class, that's going to be your assignment. Take care.